Islamic way of dealing with modernity, meaning we are not scared of progress. Mm -hmm. We are not scared of technology. We are not scared of science. But we question the goals. But we want to know the values. But we want the dignity of human beings. So you're saying there's a philosophy uh, in uh, a, f a philosophy that is based upon the fundamental questions that people ask in this time, or the challenges that we have in this time. And this philosophy deals with that type of thing, what we mean by modern philosophy. Isn't that a yes, yes, but once again, it's, it's also connected to the Quran and the Sunnah, because we also have to be clear on this, that we have the Wabit, we have rules, we have references, we, are, we try to be faithful, to be a Muslim is to be faithful. Mm -hmm. uh, what, we, what do we say about somebody who is passing away? We, we are saying, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Mm -hmm. Lillah meaning we belong to him, we want mm -hmm. to be faithful. But in between, what we want is to look at the world. So today, look at, for example, the nation state with all the problems that we have. The nation state of today, it's not the same as the nation state of the past, with one critical question. What is the relationship between economic powers and political powers. You can have a state with very nice you know, principles. If you don't get the relationship between economics and politics, you're not going to come with, yes. how are you going to do that? How are we going to say, you know what? We are for a modern economy at with one condition, an economy serving people. Right. Meaning, how are we going to translate this? Come now to bioethics. When today you can do things and change the creation in a way that you are destroying humanity. You can destroy humanity with the means that you have, the scientific means and technology. You have to come to this. Now, for example, we are talking about wars. And we are talking about you know, killing people from, with drones. Mm. There is an ethics here that we need the philosophy of life. We are not right. just dealing with uh, means, we are dealing with principles helping us to deal with means. And Muslims should be involved. The Muslims today are absent from all from great the, scientific yes, yes, from these scientific arenas. Questions. Yes, and we what are talking following. about is a Muslim, uh, a Muslim based or an Islamic based philosophy um, that can be critical, that can um, uh, reform, be reformist in terms of changing the world for a better place, in terms of asking these fundamental questions and proposing um, ethical answers. Yes, that, that's the point, and it's doubly critical. Critical was some of the answers that were provided uh, to us by scholars living with their time. Now we have to reassess that. Is it okay? Is it wrong? Everything which is coming from human minds is open to criticism. We mm -hmm. are open to this. Even when it comes to the great scholars of the past. Mm. We need to question this. But there is another thing which is more important than that, and this is what I'm saying to the Western Muslims. You have a tremendous responsibility. It's not only to be critical with your own legacy to build something new, it's to be critical to the Western civilizations to bring something also that could be more dignified mm. by saying, no, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to catch up with the dominant. Mm -hmm. I'm questioning the power of the dominant. Right. I'm questioning the means. I'm questioning what they are doing. I'm questioning what do you talk, when you talk about democracy, when I know that the democratic system now, behind the scene, there are all these transnational corporations mm -hmm. deciding, all these media. No, I want something which is dignified. So I need a philosophy that is helping us to bring new questions and also a critical, positive take on all what we have in the West, because the, the West is in crisis. And, and it's as if today, too many Western Muslims, they just try to want, to, they just want to be accepted right. in the West. Now, we need to be equipped. Now, um, philosophy, the idea of philosophy, the topics that we are talking about, it's, it could seem to be something that can be best presented by specialists in the field you know, by professors in universities, Muslim professors in universities, dealing with that question. But a lot of the challenges that the Muslims face are challenges that are faced by students, pupils in schools, by the average man on the street. How could this hikmah, how could this idea of a modern Islamic philosophy reach them? Could they also be able to, uh, in their own way, in, on their own capacity, uh, present that type of um, that, defense? That's, that's a very important question because this is where we are not talking about the philosophy that is, you know, thought about 
on a, 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 a desk or a far from reality mm. on an ivory uh, tower. Oh, That's yeah. not what we are talking about. And you know what is going to give us the very nature of an Islamic philosophy is the Quran. The Quran is an eternal book, but in fact, all the verses came responding to a practical question. Mm. It came over 23 years when a problem and the, the verse was revealed. Right. What does it mean? Look at the world and question the principle. This is exactly what we need now. It's not a philosophy far from the world. It's where we deal with average Muslims. When, for example, it comes to social justice, when it comes to daily life, family, for example. Now what we are talking about is, you know, to build the family today is a jihad. Mm -hmm. How are you going to deal? We go to what we are facing, for example, day in, day out, living with the community. I'm traveling a lot. I'm dealing with questions coming from the ground. You take these questions and then you bring them to the system. You go from the problem to the principles. Mm -hmm. You don't build the principles far from them. So this is why we need the Muslims. The problem that we have is not only the leadership among mm -hmm. Muslims, it's also the, what we call the followers, mm -hmm. the ordinary Muslims. They are not involved enough mm -hmm. in questioning, in being involved. So in all the levels, what I would suggest, based on the way we deal with the Quran, is to build the philosophy starting by looking at the practical questions to respect the ordinary Muslims. Mm -hmm. And all scholars should do, know that mm -hmm. and remember that. They are not here to be served by the community, right. but to serve the community. Right. They have to serve the community, meaning what? Listen to their questions. Mm -hmm. Listen to, for example, the question of the youth today. You travel around the world in Muslim majority countries, you come here in the West, and you see what are the questions. They have a lot of questions. Identity crisis, psychological crisis. You talk about the family. How are they going to build the family? Mm -hmm. Do you talk about freedom? No freedom in many countries. How are you going to deal with this? We take these questions, and build something which is mm -hmm. helping them to be equipped to have an understanding of the world and steps as the way they have to reform mm -hmm. it. Because at the end of the day, what is important for us is this philosophy is a philosophy of resistance and reform. Right. You resist what is bad and you reform for what is good. You know what this means? This is the very meaning of jihad. Right. Resist. Al-amr bil ma'ruf wa nahyan al munkar This is what we have to yeah. do. So we need to equip the people intellectually, psychologically, and practically. Mm -hmm. Is this happening now, and um, what role could the Muslims play in the Muslim media, uh, including the internet and so forth, in, 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 in bringing that type of message and method to the people? Uh, I, I think that the questions are here. The methodology is not, mm -hmm. and the vision is not there. Mm -hmm. So how if do we I would start say with the methodology? How, who teaches the methodology? So, so this is yeah. where we need, and this is why this program is interesting for us, is, is, is to try to, uh, from the questions that we have, mm -hmm. this is where we need to have scholars, ulama, fuqaha, mm -hmm. but we need also to have intellectuals right. coming together and trying in every field to try to get a vision. How mm -hmm. are, what are the principal questions and the principal challenges and what are the steps? So what we have now, is something which is the feeling that we are in dire need of some kind of intellectual revolution. Mm. We need something. Yes. There is a feeling. Wherever I go, the people are saying, we need something. Mm -hmm. Now, it's scattered. There is consciousness that something is needed. It's up to the leadership. It's up to the followers. It's up of the, to the intellectuals to come and to try to work on this. Mm -hmm. We need from questions to come to a vision. The vision is lacking, and we have to. Uh, to mm -hmm. So, so we should. You know, the, f the starting point of all that is to stop blaming the others. Mm -hmm. They are not responsible of our own weaknesses. Right. We are, and the problem of Muslims today is Muslims. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things that you are saying um, also seem to resonate in the non-Muslim population as well. You know, a lot of people are asking. Um, questions about accountability, facing the problem of the separation between uh, a, the, the nation state and, uh, and, and, and uh, transnational economies and so forth and so on. Um, could this modern philosophy of Islam also act as a bridge to bring people together, to bring Muslims and non-Muslims together on the same page? Yes, that's exactly, mm. that's, you know, 
the questions and the mm. fundamental questions, what are we talking about here? Mm. We are talking about humanity. Mm. We are talking about contemporary challenges that the humanity is facing. And we, we need to understand that, that we need to contribute. You know, in the West, the people are key, you know, we have been heard, the hearing so many times, you have to integrate. I say, I don't care about integration. I care about contribution. Mm -hmm. My contribution is what I can bring to mm -hmm. the, the added value of my presence. Mm -hmm. And the philosophy with these principles, with these questions, or questioning the goals, and quest this is where we are going to contribute and the people are going to listen to mm -hmm. us. And we should know that many people don't want the Muslims to be heard because they know that if we are heard, it might be that something new is going to come in mm -hmm. the West. So we are mm -hmm. at the periphery talking about wars, mm -hmm. radicalizations. I think that this is where we have to bring something and we build bridges based on the essence. And this is also something that we need, provide, uh, we need to provide the West with. Our presence should be a contributing presence and added value in ethical terms and in philosophical terms. And I think that's a very good place for us to end our conversation this week on the level of contribution contribution to our society uh, that would be of use and help for all of us who are facing the same questions. Why are we living in a society like this? What is wrong with it? And what can be done? I think when we extract the principles of Islam from its teachings, principles by definition being universal realities, this helps to bridge the gap between the differences between Muslims and non-Muslims which are masked by labels. I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank Brother Tariq Ramadan for being with us and we look forward to seeing you again same time on this station. <laughs> <laughs>